Today we are going to fix my Neptune energy bar. Welcome back to the channel guys. This is Paul and today we are going to fix the Neptune energy bar. Uh, but before we get there, let me just tell you what had happened this week and it's just been a crazy week leading up to me fixing this energy bar. So on Wednesday, my buddy actually saw a video that I had posted out a few weeks ago regarding how my tank crashed and how I lost my corals. So he decided to offer me some frags and I went over to his house on Wednesday evening and I jokingly talked about how there's been some issues with the Apex unit and I, I knocked on wood and said, so far my unit's been fine. Oddly enough, I came home, started cleaning out the frag tank to make room for these frags and my energy bar, the EB832 actually failed on me and my lights turned off, skimmer turned off and every outlet on that unit turned off. It was a really, really crazy night that night. I had to go through and did some rewiring and connected the lights, the heater, all the equipment directly to a extension cord and then plugged it to the outlet directly to get my heater, my pump and my lights working. I went ahead and figured out the issue with the energy bar and ordered the parts through Amazon and I will link that down in the description below if you are planning to do this yourself or if you're just interested in the part and how it looks like. Um, so it's going to be down there for those who need it. And essentially I took my unit apart uh, and based on what I found online there should be a light indicator showing that that step down power supply unit is working but in my case it wasn't. And I had actually went and measured it out with a voltmeter and it showed that I was getting 120 volts to that step down power supply, but I wasn't getting the 12 volt output on the other end. So that just led me to believe that that unit is faulty. So I went onto Amazon and placed the order and it arrived today. I also ordered an extra EB832 unit in case I run into this again and it's something else aside from that 12 volt uh, step down um, converter. Oh, I just wanted to have one on side just in case something like this happens again that I'm ready for it. The worst thing yet was that Friday morning at 2 a.m. the power went out. So I had to come downstairs, go to the shed, take out the generator, put some gas in it, turn it on, and find an extension cord to plug it into my reef tank or my fish tank to get at least the heater and the circulation pump going. Generator was running for about 2 hours and 15 minutes before the power came back on throughout the house at which point I turned off the generator and set it aside. Alright, today is Saturday and the part came in. So I'm going to get the part installed, get the energy bar tested so I could get everything reinstalled onto my aquarium tank and then get the outlets plugged into its appropriate outlet. But this is the unit that I just purchased right here. And this goes inside the EB832 unit. It's a step down from 120 volts down to about 12 volts. So I'm going to get this installed. So in order to get this installed, I'm going to be using a desolder gun. And this just makes the job that much easier. It's really not needed, but if you do have one, um, it's very convenient. If you are looking to get one to make your life easier, I can put down the link in the description below that shows you one that I've used in the past that works well. Um, I do have this one here and this is an alternative. This one works well as well. And again guys, this is the energy bar that failed on me. And I have here my soldering station right here. This is my soldering station or my soldering gun right here that I'm going to be using. Okay, there's a clip right here. Looks like it should come off fairly easy. Okay, another one right here, there's a ribbon. Okay, so that is off the unit now, just like that. And what we're trying to do is, we're trying to replace this unit right here. This is the unit that we are trying to desolder off and solder the new one in. And if you just look at this here, this looks to be the exact unit. 
they look pretty identical. So I'm hoping this is what the issue is. We're gonna go ahead and get this replaced. So I wanna make sure this is working before everything goes back into the cabinet. Okay, one thing to be careful is this side has a lot of high voltage capacitors and you wanna avoid touching them unless they've been discharged, okay? So be very careful when touching with a unit that has been recently plugged in. Okay, here's the two units. The old, this is the old unit with the header pan still on there. This is the new unit. Old, new. So they look identical, slight different in certain locations. PCB board, board looks like it's been redesigned. PCB board looks slightly different, but overall still the same unit with probably newer parts. All right, so we're gonna get this new one installed. I'm using some solder with rosin core to solder the pins back on. So I'm doing the two AC side. This is the step down 12 volt side. So I'm gonna get that, these two soldered on. And once I get the header pin soldered onto the PCB board, then I'll put it back into the unit and solder it in on there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and solder the pins on carefully. Good. I'm trying to line up the pins, make sure they're straight. Okay, they look pretty straight. All right. Got the new unit ready to go. Got the header pins soldered on there. And I'm gonna solder this unit back into the main motherboard. All right, so the unit has been installed and now it's the moment of truth. We're gonna plug it in, see if that light comes on, possibly we'll see if the fan turns on or not, and then we'll test the outlet to see if there's any output. So far the light is on. That's a good sign, because that wasn't working before. I heard a few clicks, so I'm assuming the unit's working. Fan doesn't seem like it's turning on. Maybe it doesn't turn on until it gets warm. So far, it looks promising. I'm gonna test it out to see if I get any outputs. Uh, on these outlets right here. I'm just using something simple like this here. If you need one for yourself for testing, I'll link it down in the description, but this or any voltmeter that you have will work. I'm setting this to 200 volts and we'll try it out. Okay, this one's got voltage, 120 volts, which is good. This one's probably not programmed to turn it on. Okay, so some of these outlets we're programmed to turn on by default if power goes off. This one's got 120 volts, okay. Again, this one is still nothing, okay. 120, 120, okay. Some of these were programmed to turn on, so to me, it looks like it's working. I'm pretty confident that when I install this back into the cabinet, everything's gonna work the way it's supposed to work. So a recap. So what was happening was my outlets stopped working and I had measured the output and I wasn't getting any voltages. I took this unit apart and noticed the light wasn't turned on. I measured the two ends there. I wasn't getting the output that I was looking for. I measured these two in, I was getting the 120 volts in I wasn't getting the 12 volts output from those two uh, ends over here, which were these two ends right here. 
I wasn't getting the 12 volts measured here and I wasn't getting the LED light to come on. So that right away tells me there's something going on with this unit. Um, and so I decided to just replace this. And I did do some online research and it looks like a lot of the other guys were running into the same issue. And luckily these were available online and you can purchase them at a relatively uh, cheap price in my opinion. So this unit I'm confident is good to go. I'm going to go ahead and install it back on my cabinet, get the wires going, and that will be it for this video. All right, guys, that is actually it for this video. I did go through the process really quick. And if there is something that you had a question about or if there's something you'd like to know about this process in regards to fixing this unit, feel free to drop it down in the comment section below and I will read your comment to make sure to answer that. And Hopefully that will push you in the right direction to get your project or your unit repaired. Again, guys, like and subscribe. Thank you for stopping by and I will see you in the next video.